Hi. Oh, that gets really close. I forgot about that. It's been a while since I have made a video. I moved about a year ago and haven't figured out this smaller space quite yet um, for making videos. But I'm feeling inspired and I would I have a book coming out. Um, it's being released in three days, all natural perfume making. And I was hoping to show some of these recipes in the book um, in videos. So a little bit of a, um, a visual to go along with the recipes. The book has beautiful pictures in it, um, but they were all done by the publisher and um, don't necessarily show like step by step how this all looks. And for a visual person like, um, like I am, I know that I really like to see that kind of thing. So this corresponds to page 94. This is making an herbal oil using the quick method. The quick method takes about a couple hours. The other way to make an herbal oil is to use a method called either the cold method or folk method. Um, and that takes four to six weeks. So I'm not a good planner, so I'm usually using the quick method. Always using the quick method. So yeah, uh, I've got my rose petals and grape seed oil already in my double boiler. So double boiler for me means a measuring cup into a pot of water. The water is about halfway full. I don't know. So I'll get you closer here in just a minute. And this is my, it's already getting warm. These are my rose petals, oops, dripping um, in oil. So the oil completely covers and satur saturates the um, rose petals. And when I f first put the oil in, uh, I had about um, half an inch to an inch of extra oil. But since the oil makes the herbs the bigger, um, now it looks, they, they look about even. And that's why you want the extra oil when you're putting the oil over the herbs. So I put the water in, put the water in the pot. Not sure, can you see? The water is about, um, you know, halfway full put the rose petals in, covered it with oil, put it all on medium. I've got a wooden chopstick out there to stir it every once in a while. And it will sit there for a couple hours. You don't want the water to boil because you don't want it to get unstable and you don't want water to leap into the oil part. Okay, you don't, we want to keep water and oil completely separated. Um, and that's it. Like once it's really fragrant in here and the oil will take on a little bit of the hue of the herb, which I'm using rose petals. Um, I'll know it's done. It'll be a couple hours from now. I'll strain it, put it into a glass jar and I'll be ready to use as an herbal base, um, a perfume oil base. Uh, the one thing that you can do, you can do this for any herb violets, lavender, um, calendula, those are some good ones. Um, but, so I'm using these rose petals that I got from Frontier Co-op. You could also get them perhaps from an herb store near you, just in the bulk section. But if you're using something like rose buds, which you know, are still in um, a tight little form or any herb that's a little bit bigger, then you'll want to first bruise them, just like press them with like the biggest knife that you own, and then also cut them up a little. And that's gonna release a lot of those um, really good smelling oils. Okay, but I didn't have to do that. My, my petals were already all chopped up, so. Um, I didn't need to do that with these guys. And plus when I opened the bag, I could already smell all the fragrance. So I knew that they were ready to um, just go straight into the oil. If you have herbs um, that you've maybe had for a while in a jar or 
um, bag or whatever, and they don't smell anymore. And this goes for even the, your herbs and spices in your cabinet. If they don't smell anymore, then they've lost their active constituents and you don't want to use them anymore. So you can go ahead and compost those. I mean, the only caveat to that is, is if you do have like a bigger, like a rose bud, um, you might not smell it as much as when you start like bruising it and chopping it. And then it should be really fragrant. If you don't really smell like much of a, of a difference, um, then yeah, you've probably got some, some old herbs on your hands that you can go ahead and compost. So that is all you gotta do. Um, I will see you when it's time to strain. Okay. It's been a couple hours and it's time to strain the herbal oil. So the best way to do this, you can do it several ways, but the best way I've found is to um, take a strip of cheesecloth. You just have to cut some um, off of cheesecloth. You can find this like in the baking aisle of pretty much any grocery. And you put it over a mesh strainer. And when you pour, you're going to pour your herbal oil into, I like a measuring cup so I can pour it into different jars and bottles that I'm using, but you can also just pour it directly into a jar um, if that's easier for you. I usually use a, you, I usually use a measuring cup because I like my, my, um, my herbal oils in bottles and it's hard to strain directly into a bottle. <clears throat> I always reuse my containers. This used to have calendula, calendula and rose infused witch hazel apparently. Um, so I, I will just reuse this and put a new label on it with the date. Like um, this has a date from 2018. Uh, so I know, you know what I'm doing and I'm going to use this bottle. This used to have just plain grapeseed oil in it. And I don't have any on hand, but if I did, I would put a little bit of vitamin E into it. It just takes a couple of drops, or if you have like vitamin E in pill form of um, the soft gels, you can just poke one and uh, put the contents of that vitamin E pill in, directly into the oil, and that acts as a preservative. I actually go through my herbal oils really quickly because I use them, you know, day and night, like I said, on my body, like arms, um, stomachs, a little bit of my back, legs sometimes. Um, so yeah, it's up to you what you do. So I'm going to grab, um, I, I turned down my, um, stove First it was at like a medium at like five and I turned it down to like three and then as soon as it starts even just like bubbling and roaring a little tiny bit, I just turn it down. So then I turned it down to low because even at three it was still like moving around a bit and you, you just don't want your, your container to get unstable. You don't want water um, popping over into the oil mm. and it smells really good. The house smells good. And I don't know if you can tell, but um, the hue is a little pinkish. You might be able to tell after I pour this in. So um, I would recommend wearing an apron or old clothes. I'm wearing old clothes right now because oil does stain your clothes. Okay, so the reason we're using the uh, cheesecloth is so when it gets to about this point, take it and bundle it up and really squeeze out all the goodness because that's like the, the extra potent um, stuff, like, right? And since I'm using the smaller measuring cup than um, the larger measuring cup that was part of my double boiler setup, 
then I'm going to need to pour it into one of my containers here and then get the rest of this out. So, oh, you don't get to see my lovely compost. My hands are really oily at this point, which I love. I mean, it's good stuff. It's like the best hand lotion ever. Oh, here we go. Um, but it does make for some slipperiness. And if you don't like that, you can always wear gloves. There we go. And I don't, I don't know if you can tell, but that's a little pinkish. It doesn't take on the, um, the color of your herbs that much. It's just like a little bit of a hue. I don't know if you can tell or not. The color is not great right now. It's like kind of late. It's, what time is it? It's a little after five and, um, it's a gray, like off and on rainy day. So, uh, so that's it. Um, thank you for watching. If you have any questions at all, just um, drop them down below, or you can contact me through my website at uh, bossomherbs.org is the easier one to type in, or botanicalalchemyandapothecary.com is uh, the same site, and you can contact me through there or. Uh, yeah, just comment and I should see it. All right. Thank you. Bye.